Hey, Internet, it's your soul. And um, wow, there's so much happening online right now with regards to so many different subjects. Really trying to uh, piece together all the evidence, evidence in relation to Jeffrey Epstein and so many different aspects of the tangled web connected to him. I just want to make this quick video on the subject of Google censorship again, because there's more and more little pieces of the puzzle coming together. Many people are complaining about Google limiting their reach and they lose a feature here, they lose a feature there, people being treated differently to other people. And it's not, it really isn't just because you're so-called right wing or whatever. Basically, if you talk about certain subjects, regardless of your political alignment, you have these problems with Google. And there's a really good whistleblower testimony that's just been released by Project Veritas. Another one, this guy was actually interviewed by them a few weeks ago, but they blacked him out. Now he's left Google, and they, in fact, Google figured out who he was, basically, and had him had the police come down and do a, quote, wellness check on him, claiming that he was mentally ill and all this kind of stuff. I actually sent robots to his house that the police did, uh, you know, like anti-bomb robots. I don't know exactly what was going on there, but anyway, he's done another interview with Project Veritas where he goes into more detail and actually dumped a bunch of documents from Google, which show more of the details of how they censor people on a technical level and actually lists of websites and keywords which they've censored, he claims. Now, I've noticed this kind of censorship taking place for a very long time on Google. It's absolutely no surprise to me. I knew that, you know, in the earlier days of the internet and Google, before all this happened, you could search for keywords related to controversial subjects and you'd get suggestions. You'd get basically the right results. You'd, you'd see what you would expect to see an unbiased list of keywords and search results related to the subject, just like you do with other subjects. But then if probably 10 plus years ago, actually, they changed that and certain keywords, just especially on YouTube as well, uh, you, you wouldn't get any relevant keywords coming up or any, any relevant search suggestions when you put in uh, controversial keywords. And that's just extended more and more and more. And what he's actually showing you here is uh, the insider's view of how that all works. Now, I'm not going to play the whole video. I really recommend you watch the whole interview with him. But this is relevant because basically my, my recent video about Jeffrey Epstein, probably all my videos, to be honest, but the recent one and Bill Gates, and Microsoft is a good example, I think, of, uh, of how YouTube is not treating me and many people like me fairly. But let's just watch a few seconds of this clip, first of all. Who knows what that person's thinking? When they see the documents themselves, they're going to be shocked, they're going to be terrified, and they're going to be like, how can Google so blatantly lie to the American public and lie to Congress when there is, um, when there is a pile of evidence showing that what they're saying is untrue? Here is another one of the documents that you leaked to us. This is, well, tell us what this is. Okay, so this is a blacklist, one of many blacklists that, that are at Google. This particular blacklist is showing which uh, uh, news sites aren't going to show up underneath the search bar when people are searching on their Android phones. Right, so I've actually got the files that he's, that he's dumped, and there's only a couple of lines in there, that, uh, a couple of files in there that I can see which are relevant to this kind of blackness, but he said there's many more, I'm sure there are. This is just from one area of Google. Not that big a list, I don't know whether it's the full list or not, but if we look at some of these domains you can see here, you've got Godlike Productions, which is one of the main, or well, very common site used for, for dumping leaks and uh, information the mainstream is definitely trying to bury. Uh, who else have you got in here? You've got InfoWars. Um, you know, you can argue all day long about the value of InfoWars, but I would suggest that it probably shouldn't be blocked anyway. Um, oh, this Natural News is in there somewhere. You've got various torrent sites as well. So basically they're linking, I mean, if if you have a, uh, a website which allows links from other sites to be put forward in news areas and so on, things like that, you do need a, a blacklist, basically. There are all kinds of domains out there that shouldn't be in your site, according to your own policies. It could just be legal reasons. It could be, you know, you're trying to block out porn, that kind of thing. You know, there's nothing unusual or wrong about having a list like this. The issue is who's in the list and why. So none of my sites appear in there. You know, the kinds of sites that do appear in there, there, I mean, Natural News, for example, I don't agree with everything they put on Natural News, but they've put a significant amount of things in there, which I would say are backed up by science. And, you know, they're not, you'd have to go some to prove that they were spreading fake news. Let's put it like that. The only real, if I, let me put it this way, if I, if I work for Google and I wasn't an expert in health and, and medicine and so on, 
And someone came to me and said, Natural News is spreading fake news. And I looked at their website, I'd see a massive library of stories about drugs, health, nutrition. Basically, I've got no real way of knowing whether that's fake news or not, because I'm probably not an expert in those subjects. So what do I do? Well, I could go and talk to a, a quote unquote expert. Well, then it comes down to who you talk to, doesn't it? Because you could quite easily just go and talk to a pharmaceutical company executive or whatever and get a bunch of, you know, people from Merck or Glaxo or whoever to come down and pick out, oh yeah, this is real science, this isn't. Obviously, they're going to be picking the ones that suit their agenda, aren't they? They're going to be picking, they're going to be saying anything that benefits them as a corporation is real news. Anything that makes them look bad is fake news. It's obvious. We don't know exactly how Google has, has chosen these sites, but they haven't revealed that. But I can, I, I'm fairly sure that, that, that most people wouldn't agree with the way that they're choosing these sites anyway. So, so what I want to bring you on to now is this video here, which I uploaded a few days ago. It's about Bill Gates, and it's an observation I made, which is that Bill Gates was on Jeffrey Epstein's flight log from 2013, and you know he's been involved in his his father actually was uh, is alleged to have been a eugenicist, Bill Gates, and was head of the Planned Parenthood organization, which many people have said it was a kind of uh, polite face of eugenics once eugenics became a, a you know a negative term in people's minds they kind of moved on to Planned Parenthood but that's a massive subject in itself not going to dive too deeply into that but the point being here you know Epstein has been connected to eugenics and technocracy and you know the cyborgization of, of humanity Bill Gates is very much connected to all of that as well it's not surprising that they knew each other and that Bill Gates was on his plane the question is, how far does it go? I mean, does it extend to blackmail? Does it extend to child abuse and that kind of stuff? Well, I don't have any specific definite answer to that, but I do know that in 2013, the same year that he was logged as being on Epstein's plane, there were news stories circulating that a man had been arrested at Bill Gates's mansion, who was his personal engineer, who had 6,000 plus images of child rape and child abuse and porn and so on. So I have to, you know, I'm sure anybody with a brain is going to ask the question, well, if a man who is, I mean, the fact that he's a billionaire is almost irrelevant, really, but it's important from the bigger picture perspective. But if any person were to be found to be definitely in the close vicinity of one of the world's likely largest child abusers or in a ring of child abusers, and then his own personal engineer, bearing in mind he is also an engineer who lives with him, is arrested for the same thing it doesn't take you know a detective to, to realize that we should be asking about that man in the middle as well at the very least it's highly suspect that two people close to him are involved in this uh, i mean the average person probably doesn't know anybody who is involved in any of these kind of things so for, for one person to have two people around them like that is is definitely questionable so anyway i made a, a short video about that and people pointed out, as they pointed out previously from my previous video about Jeffrey Epstein, that the video wasn't showing up in all the ways that they would expect it to in YouTube. So if we go to, this is the actual video, uh, the first one that I uploaded for, uh, that was just basically showing you the 4chan post, which claimed that Epstein wasn't dead and he'd been switched out. And I covered that, you know, very early on. And so it got, you know, a fair, fair number of views, but... As it happens, it got more views on 3speak.online, which is a tiny site in comparison to YouTube. It got many more views. So that tells me, for definite, that YouTube is reach-restricting this video. So, and if you look at the keyword list from the Project Veritas whistleblower as well, the actual list of keywords that Google have been blocking, I don't understand why, but probably at least a third of the keywords in that list relate to the Las Vegas shooting and Stephen Paddock and many other likely false flag shootings and terrorist events. So you have to ask the question, why are some of the main topics they're blocking out relating to terrorist events? And I mean, this is, these are things that are valid subjects for people to talk about. It's the biggest shooting in American history, as I understand. Why wouldn't be people, people be talking about it? But apparently YouTube decides that it's too controversial for you to be able to search for and find related videos for. And that, to me, is extremely revealing. And, you know, you don't have to be a conspiratorially minded person or an investigative minded person to question why they're doing it so um yeah people pointed out if you type epstein in youtube and sort on upload date this video doesn't show anymore 
So I tested that, and that's completely true. It was true at the time, and for days afterwards, if you were to search for Epstein, you, and, you know, basically search the list of results by upload time, you can scroll through and see all these videos from other people on the subject, and then mine isn't there. In fact, none of my videos on Epstein were in that list. So for the rest of the world, searching for this subject, when they look for the newest videos, they don't see my videos. And I have no explanation for that. YouTube has never, or Google have never contacted me and said, hey, you know, you should do this, you shouldn't be doing this. Um, please look at this particular term in our documents as to why we're re restricting your videos. So, you know, people are saying, I support you now because we can see that you're being um, downgraded in, in Google and so on. So then I, I made a reply to someone, I think it was here, basically saying, um, you know, oh, by the way, I've uploaded a new video about Bill Gates. So I can see no one's watching it. Can you go and check it out? And basically they said, you know, you can find it again. Um, so, so she says here, it's weird because I saw it going to your channel. But I'm subscribed to you with notifications and I did not get notified. I think you're being monitored. So this subscriber to my channel is saying that she's opted in to having notifications come through to her when I upload a new video, uh, but she hasn't seen them. Now, obviously, that's not proof of anything, but you know, it's something to bear in mind. So, you know, I can understand why Google might not want these videos to be promoted, you know, on the sort of commercial end of things, people say, oh, well, it's because they've got advertisers and they don't want advertisers seeing questionable content and all that kind of stuff. Well, my, my videos aren't even monetized. I've never tried to monetize them. Well, not for at least over a year anyway. There was no point because Google would never let me monetize them. And in fact, now I think you have to have a certain amount of traffic before they even give you them. So I've just given up with it and I'm, I'm moving over to 3Speak. But... Um, very questionable. So, so then I come into my um, creator area to try to figure out if I can learn anything about the situation. And I see here this video, you know, that, about Bill Gates. Okay, it has three comments. Well, that's strange because I've only seen two. All right, maybe one was marked as spam. I should go in and check. Oh, but there's no none held for review and none spam. Oh, so where's the third comment? Um, I have no idea because there isn't a third comment visible to me, but I would suggest Google systems, you know, as vast as they are, they're not the best maintained systems in the world. They're professional in many, many, many ways. But when it, I've noticed when it comes to, um, particularly the censorship end of things, they seem to leave a few loose, loose threads, let's say. So, you know, it's possible that someone's left a comment that I can't see and that Google has completely removed and I know nothing about. So yeah, um, if you want to know the truth of important subjects, Google is not the network for you. Full stop. You might find a fair amount of information on there, but in my opinion, when you get too close to the truth, you say too much, which ties too many dots together that they don't want joined together, then they will take steps to, at the very least, limit your reach and possibly kick you off. But um, in my experience, they prefer not kicking people off because it draws too much attention to them. And probably because if they kicked off everyone they wanted to kick off, it would be a huge number of people. So instead, they have this sandboxing approach, which is to limit your ability to use their site and for people to see you, but without you even knowing. So you don't complain about it. You just, you just, I mean, it, from a psychological perspective, it's quite a powerful way to put people off of producing content because ultimately they're, they're just going to feel like, well, there's no point. No one's interested in my work. That just isn't true. Uh, and you know, if you if you look at how to optimize videos on YouTube through keywords and that kind of thing and titles, you'll find that it's also set up just like Google's main searches to unfairly, I would say, bias the results towards successful big traffic sites. So, which you know typically means uh, corporate controlled networks that have used their resources to collaborate and buy out competitors and so on. So, just like with the TV networks. You have maybe hundreds of channels, but they're all generally mostly controlled by the same people. And as a new person coming into YouTube, for example, trying to uh, grab traffic and get attention, very, very, very difficult. And in fact, I would suggest, um, you know, you're going to have to do some pretty clever tricks to actually get any attention at all, probably having to promote quite a lot away from YouTube. Uh, and then that, you know, your, your chances of success with that depend on how much the networks you're using are controlled as well. So. 
very very dodgy and dangerous situation in my opinion and we definitely need to be doing everything we can to communicate with each other network share information away from the controlled internet away from youtube don't you know by all means put your content on youtube and so on but don't expect it to be seen by everyone who wants to see it sites i would recommend are my own site eureka.org ureka.org which uses the steam blockchain which is an immutable blockchain uh, which basically means your posts if you choose them to will go onto that blockchain which is public completely public and it is not censored uh, individual sites that use the data from the steam blockchain can choose to censor and steamit.com does sometimes do that when they're asked to by legal request but other sites like steampeak.com and other ones are a little bit more under the radar and don't really i don't even know if they get those requests but they certainly don't censor as much as steamit.com does minds.com is also a pretty decent site i think and there's you know there's a few others as well but those are my pr preferred ones particularly anything that's, that's powered by blockchain because it it actually decentralizes the ability to Post the data and to sense and to censor it becomes much much harder. So yeah, if you found this useful, if you've got any comments on this subject, any extra information regarding YouTube censorship or how to circumvent it, that kind of thing, definitely let us know in the comments. And until next time, peace.